Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the full release version of the Thunderer. This is the premium tier 10 British battleship, which you can find in the armory under the ships tab for 252,000 coal. This video is recorded in 0.8.8, .8, so the audio is going to sound very different, but this is the most up-to-date version. This is the version that you can go out and buy right now. I want to leave my thoughts on the pros and cons, the build that I use, and the reasons for all of the choices, both in the ammo selection, but also when I use different equipment. This does come with Defensive AA, which is a unique trait. My build does have Jack of All Trades. You might be wondering, you know, everything makes sense. Faster rudder shift, concealment, fire prevention, but Jack of All Trades, why? I've got Jack Dunkirk. Jack Dunkirk has a 10% Jack of All Trades trait instead of 5%. So I get the benefit of a faster damage control, but also a faster repair and defensive AA cooldown. As far as the modules are concerned, you might have noticed one oddity. I do have the faster rudder shift module, and it places my rudder shift around 8.5-ish, 9 seconds. It's a very noticeable bump. This makes it feel a lot closer to a cruiser than a battleship, and you're going to need that because your heal is not the Conqueror heal. This is not the super heal that reprints a ship every time you use it. This is much similar to the tier 8 and below British heal, which is still very good, but you have a soft outer layer of British armor. You're just like the French. You don't have any speed boost. You've got to mitigate your damage somehow, and the way I've chosen is through the active rudder. I really enjoy that, and I don't feel like the guns work against it because they have really fast turret traverse. We're in, we're talking around 36 seconds base. So couple that with my Jack Dunkirk, it works out very well. And I'm still messing around with the audio, guys. I saw a post by Wargaming and yeah, some Octavian was like, we are aware that some audio bugs made it to live that should not have made it to live. The AA relationship to your main battery, to your secondaries is all off. Just bear with us, there's gonna be some patch. You know what, I spent like an hour or so dialing in the audio and I'm still not happy with it so I hope that they will come with a solution very quickly. But the Thunderer is just a real treat to play. 36 second turret traverse, 23 second reload with my build. It ends up feeling very similar to something like the Republic. And my counterpart, Rutin Tutin Vladimir Putin, has identified that as the most similar battleship. But this has 457 guns. And this has the British HE, which really stands out. And it has a very fast rudder. A very, very fast rudder. A noticeable rudder that allows you to avoid torpedoes, incoming shells from maximum distance. And you can hit those shots from maximum distance. So a really fun battleship to control. And yeah, look at there. 10,000 on that ship. And it's near our max range. And if he tried to similarly engage us, we might have enough time to activate our rudder and avoid some of the damage. Now there's a Shima in the area. This ship has sort of the legendary Conqueror and the ability to equip concealment baked into it. So you're getting sort of a two for one there and that's a really big advantage, I think. And if they wouldn't have introduced such an improvement into the dispersion category, I would be very worried about the ship being competitive. But thankfully Wargaming, after multiple test versions, finally got the hint and gave this a very accurate dispersion. It starts out 251 meter base, and I have it improved to 234 meters. And that's a really great number compared to the 297 and the 300, which unfortunately some of these battleships have to deal with. This one, not the case though. It is very accurate and consistent. And that Des Moines, he's being a little cheeky. I think he wants to show himself but I would also like to punish him, and he's just barely behind the island. So what I'm holding for is I'm holding for a shot, and I'm going to punish his, his nose in. He, yeah, I think he wants to nose in. That's what I'm seeing. And we got a nice little shell on the enemy. Montana didn't really do it. Don't really care all that much. But obviously, turret traverse, the rudder shift, they all work very well together. You're not in a situation where your rudder is way faster than your turret traverse or vice versa. Everything is very smooth, and yep, sure enough, this Des Moines is pushing in, and he is trying. And first first shot, eh, not as good as I would like. 
but we do have our front guns rotating, and oh my. He has realized the error of his ways, and can we punish him with these errors of his ways? And oh, yes, we can. 14,000, oh, actually 15,000, 14,900. And I would love another Citadel. Just massive amount of damage. Massive amount of damage at a high rate of fire. And because of the gun caliber, there's a very few amount of cruisers that can stand up to it from any angle. You just punch in very easily, very quickly, and you don't really care. And we get another Citadel. Just beautiful, beautiful. Love the guns, love the accuracy. It used to be really awful to have to deal with the accuracy, but it's not anymore. And, you know, someone might be asking, well, this is a British battleship. Why aren't you just spamming high explosive? Because the gun caliber. Because the gun caliber and the accuracy are set up in such a way that I can punish from distance into their citadels, and I can do 10,000 damage. I could probably do the same amount of damage with high explosive, but I couldn't bust through the citadel there against the Des Moines. And then there's another trait to this. Compare it to the Conqueror. The Conqueror has 12 high explosive sources for around 45%. The Thunderer has 8 for around 63%. You're not going to have the same kind of fire amount. And I'm probably the worst person to talk about this because I have like a negative fire chance when I play the game. And... I don't know what I thought here. I think I thought the torpedoes were going to clearly be deactivated by the time I got over. I tried to associate the Minotaur as the source, and clearly I was wrong, and we ran smack into it. There's no excuse for that. I know that's kind of embarrassing, but you know what? There's always a reason. Hopefully you guys learn from it. But we're going after this Iowa, friendly Rootin' Tootin'. He's trying to angle with the Conqueror, so he wanted to compare and contrast the Conqueror versus the Thunderer. And I want you guys to check out the end score screen and you to tell me which one came out ahead in this game. And we're making use of that heal. It, it is a disappointment compared to the Super Conqueror heal. You do have the exact same amount of health as the Conqueror, but you have a much weaker heal. You do get one extra charge though, so that is appreciated. And I'm gonna use my defensive AA on cooldown whenever something's near me like this. It's not gonna give a lot, but any bit that it gives, it might be the difference between keeping a guy spotted or getting him killed or keeping him alive. So it's something that's there. It still has very Conqueror-esque AA. It's not the most spectacular. It's it's there. It's, it's kind of okay, especially if they're attacking you directly. But when you're trying to assist teammates with your long range, it's pretty mediocre, if I'm being honest. It also has the Ray Citadel. This is quite literally the exact same chassis as the Conqueror. There's no benefit from a secondary range. You have to go seeking the Ohio if you're looking for a ship comparable to this one. And oh, by the way, the Ohio is available too in the Research Bureau for 62,000 research points. Not quite as easy to obtain. So it'll be a little bit before I receive... Oh yes, two Citadels on that guy. That's what you deserve, my friend. And oh, unfortunately, the island is in the way. Teammate dies. He showed a little bit too much side to the Iowa. And thankfully, I have a, a much more appropriate rudder shift. So I could sort of bait shots in towards me, you know. Open up, show all your side. I could even open up and fire all my guns. And then I could angle very aggressively back to close up that gap. And I really enjoy that trait of the Vanguard. And honestly, you know, 381 at tier 8 isn't very impressive. 457 at tier 10, though is a very impressive gun caliber. I just think that this is a better version of that first iteration, and it does it just so well. And I really enjoyed it, and our first salvo on the Iowa didn't really go where I wanted it. You know what, that's okay. I could switch to HE, go bow, but I'm gonna just go superstructure and locate the shells as appropriately as I can. And honestly, I had three pin, but I felt like I probably could have done more damage. I think I penetrated one of his guns and it absorbed some of that damage meant for the health of his ship. But we're angled. We're going to easily pump this in. I mean, the accuracy, the consistency. Look, look at the location. It's going exactly where I want it to go. On a really reasonable cooldown. 20, 22 seconds. That competes very well with something like the Republic in its HE, its AP. It doesn't have quite the gun velocity of the Republic, and it certainly doesn't have the speed boost, but it has a little bit of extra armor. Its Citadel is 
at the waterline. The Republic has 32 all the way around. So literally all those HE spammers have no issue getting into you whatsoever. This has a much faster rudder shift. The turret reverse feels faster as well. I don't remember the Republic's off the top of my head, but I don't think it was 36 seconds. I think the recent development of some of these battleships, especially battleship killers, Wargaming has definitely given them a really fast turret reverse. And if you think 36 seconds or 30 seconds is fast, just wait. The Ohio's even faster with my build. So we are able to capture the base. You notice very easily maneuvering around aircraft carrier and torpedoes. That's a huge advantage of this rudder. It really allows this battleship to really book it around corners. You can almost juke shots sometimes, certainly from long range. And the torpedo, you feel it's just so much more comfortable around aircraft carriers, shimakazes, you name it. It has a really great maneuvering feature. It goes 29.5 knots base. You can obviously speed that up. That's a very good speed, I think. Honestly, that's, that's pretty fast for tier 10. Yamato's slower. I'm not sure. I think the Montana, I think the Bismarck is, uh, the Bismarck, tier 10. Uh, the GK is 30. So it's, it's right near the top end of most battleships, save for the French and a couple. So it, it works out very well speed-wise. Secondaries, unfortunately, are really shallow. You're, it's just not a secondary ship. That's okay. The Ohio is a secondary ship, so you can go a secondary build if you're looking forward to that. And oh, man, the accuracy... The gun caliber, it's made to kill battleships. Made to, and it does it quite well. And have you noticed? I haven't been firing high explosive this game. This is one of those games where just so many people volunteered their side to me, and of course, I'm gonna pump AP into it, but if, oh, another nice, we missed it slightly, the Citadel. I'm just gonna pump AP, and the AP of two uh, 457s, <laughs> it's gonna do work. Going to do a lot of work. I'm hoping to try and punish this guy. He is showing a side, but he noticed something that I've just done. I waited too long. Look at the shells. He angles just in the nick of time. The placement allows it to ricochet or non-penetrate, just barely. I should have gone forward guns fire, then try the second guns, and the forward guns might have been enough to sit down and knock him out. But he's greedy. He's opening up. It's much easier for me to open up and then close before he can even react, and... Front guns don't work out, back guns do, kind of fired half a second too soon, but this is an easy victory for me. I should not be worried at all, and I'm not, because the Thunder is built really well to deal with really big battleships. Unfortunately, I kind of misplayed this, and I think my teammates will be successful in getting the kill. I do try and throw off a little bit in the back gun, but unfortunately, I'm not able to, and the friendly aircraft carrier gets a hit. North Carolina finishes them off. So overall, love the Thunderer. Love the guns. The chassis itself is solid. The downgrade of heel is understandable when you consider just how much more alpha is available to the ship. The AP is fantastic. The high explosive is the British high explosive, so you know that's going to burn things to the ground. The added benefit of having really good alpha is really appreciated. And I think that the guns speak for themselves in this game. Clearly, we did a great job for our team. One thing that I am kind of disappointed with Wargaming is they gave the gun module on the Conqueror back to anyone who purchased it. They gave you the value of XP and the credits that you spent on it. But they didn't consider the player that just really likes 457 Conqueror. They didn't give you a coupon for purchasing the Thunder or anything like that to sort of say, hey, if you want to get this kind of play back in a better version, here you go. You just get to have to spend the same amount of coal as everyone else and oh looky there the conqueror versus the thunderer hmm rootin it didn't work out very well for you it definitely did for us thank you and i'll catch you guys another time thanks for watching the video if you'd like to check out more you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads you could also choose to subscribe to my channel we do daily world of worship videos first impression how to news review related my North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.